I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Charges have been filed against a City of Palm Coast employee accused of theft. John Arking reports. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office filed a charging affidavit with the state attorney's office against 47-year-old Timothy Spangler, recommending he be charged with grand theft and scheming to defraud. The charges follow a six-month investigation sparked by a fraud report made by city officials in February. Spangler was originally hired to work as the general manager of the Palm Harbor Golf Course, where he worked for 18 months. During that time, it was determined he'd been taking personal check payments for children's golf summer camps and Saturday lessons. The payments were supposed to be paid direct to the city, but Spangler reportedly told some parents that there'd been a change and he was now taking payments directly. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley. These investigations take a long time to do a forensic audit on bank accounts and get subpoenas for banks to provide the data, but it did result when the investigation was done in the request for the state attorney's office to file former charges at grand theft against the employee. It's believed Spangler fraudulently received just under $5,000 from the scheme. Authorities say the case is still active and more charges may be filed in the future. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Erking. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Delta Airlines nonstop to Atlanta, and now nonstop service to New York City via American Airlines. What does Flagler Beach lose if it cuts its budget? We're looking at cutting about $130,000. City Manager Larry Newsom said that's because his board wants the millage rate to be about 5.5 instead of 5.88 that he proposed. Newsom said that since he works for the city, he does what he's told to do. He said he doesn't want to affect the staff pay adjustments, though. Tomorrow, what might happen to the staff at Flagler Beach if there's a pay cut? From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. Flagler County School Board meetings could soon begin with prayer. The controversial issue will be discussed at a workshop next month after the board's last meeting began with an invocation from the Reverend Janine Klontz, a pastor at Flagler Beach United Methodist Church. Her prayer was followed by a discussion about her work to help those with cancer and the homeless. Board Chair Janet McDonald had invited Klontz to the meeting and had called it what she hoped to be the start of a new tradition, including more faith leaders in board discussions. Board member Andy Dance questioned McDonald's motives. She eventually apologized if she had overstepped or offended anyone. The Benel City Commission also begins its meetings with a prayer. More homes are coming to a development in Palm Coast. City Council members have agreed to a zoning amendment that allows a developer to add 140 homes to a gated community a few miles from State Road 100 south of Flagler Executive Airport. That brings the total number of homes in Grand Landings to 890. Now developer JLT can also use a commercial area to build multifamily homes, but it's unclear how many apartments or condos may go there. Residents are complaining that the developer hasn't yet built a pool or other promised amenities for homes already approved. They also worry about parking, but those issues could become part of a civil lawsuit. To accommodate traffic in the area, the city is considering expanding Citation Boulevard, which connects to Beltaire Parkway. A new tech company launches in Flagler County. With more, here's Tony Magoo. A1A Wi-Fi, a new tech company, has launched in Flagler County by owner Stephen Burke and Nate Morris. The company provides businesses the opportunity to collect their customers' data in exchange for using the businesses, government agencies, or nonprofits' secure Wi-Fi. We're excited about bringing this technology service to Flagler County and beyond, said Nate. Our clients' customer Wi-Fi is no longer just a service they must provide. It's now an additional asset and marketing tool for their business. He added, here's how it works. It asks anyone who would use the Wi-Fi for their email address, cell phone number, and name. Then the business can then send the individual information on specials, upcoming events, and more. The business then also has access to A1A Wi-Fi software that collects traffic information within its configured range. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.